big idea of Venus return, and that is essentially what we refer to as Starling's Law. Now, it's got nothing to do with little speckled birds. What this does have to do with is that Starling's Law states that stroke volume, in other words, the amount of blood leaving the heart per contraction, is equal to Venus return. Okay, so I'm going to refer to that as VR. So this Venus return, the amount of blood returning to the heart, specifically the right atrium, it's very important because it's only that blood which is then available to be ejected from the heart. And therefore, when we're under things like exercise conditions, we need to make this as high as possible so that we are delivering oxygen and other resources to the cells to respire and for other processes. So how is it that we can get this venous return during exercise and up it, the amount of blood returning to the uh, right atrium? How can we up it and what mechanisms does the body have to achieve that? Well, here's the first one, and it's a very, very simple one. It's the idea, folks, of gravity. Now, I'm not going to draw the body and gravity. I've drawn a little apple here to give us memories of Newton. But what we can say here is that gravity helps blood return to the heart depending on the position of the body and depending on where the blood is. So, for example, if we have got blood in what we call our superior superior vena cava and this is the vena cava that's coming from the upper body let's describe it as the arms the shoulders the head this means that that blood will fall back to the heart with the support of gravity effectively we could talk about our mechanics it will produce a weight force mass times gravity and it will fall back to the heart through those veins now obviously that doesn't work effectively from the legs unless we invert the body and by the by invert the body i mean you know switch it to be upside down so think about images of athletes maybe between full time and a period of extra time in let's say a rugby match or a hockey match and they are sort of literally lying on the backs with someone shaking their legs to encourage that blood blood back to the heart increase venous return and that's one mechanism which we've got now that of course is almost an accidental mechanism so let's have a look at things which are a little bit more specific biological this here folks is a vein Okay, now what I've drawn in, of course I've drawn these things in advance, what I've drawn here is specifically a vein and that vein containing what we refer to as smooth muscle. And I do want to sort of first of all highlight which layer is the smooth muscle, it's this red, let me do that again actually, it wasn't specific enough, it's this red layer here, this red layer here, this is smooth muscle. Now I have to say I've drawn the vein here in a very kind of structural format. Veins are actually much looser, not very often kind of circular in their structure because they don't have as much smooth muscle. But the nature of this smooth muscle is very interesting. It is capable of pulsing. So its vasomotor tone increases, which squeezes in, and its vasomotor tone decreases, and then it kind of relaxes out. Should have chosen a different color for that, but anyway. It relaxes out, it relaxes out, it dilates out. And this is what we would refer to as the pulsing of smooth muscle. Of course, pulsing of smooth muscle will increase blood pressure. And let me maybe describe in here, we'd also get lumen reducing, lumen reducing you know, during the actual contractile phase of that. And of course, this is happening rhythmically. So as blood is trying to return back to the heart, this pulsing smooth muscle is supporting that process. And by the way, I apologize for that little tinkle in the background. Obviously, something I meant to turn off that I didn't. Never mind. Okay, let's move on. I'd now like to talk to you about a really remarkable structure. They are called pocket valves. And, you know, again, excuse my somewhat shaky drawing here. I thought it'd be better to do them in advance than you watch me draw these things. But we are talking about pocket valves. And pocket valves, you can see one of them exactly here. The pocket valves are featured in veins only. I mean, we could say venules as well, but veins is where we want to sort of put our focus. And what do these do? As blood is pushed upwards through this vein, uh, uh, through this vein, of course, the, the actual valve will open. But once that sort of systole, that pressure, uh, deceases and the blood falls backwards, this valve will close. And why is that important? It will prevent backflow. That is the role of valves. You've probably come across these valves uh, in other areas, for example, the structure of the heart, um, but their job is essentially to prevent the backflow of blood. So the blood can only move in one direction because the valves prevent any sort of um, movement backwards. And remember, this is particularly important during diastole of the heart, okay? As the heart is into uh, relaxation phase, the blood will actually begin to fall backwards. The valves prevent that from happening. So it's a really, really important um, process. And by the way, you get more of them, more of them, in what we call distal valves. Now, distal is not a particularly important key term for us, 
But what I mean by this is that the further this is away from the left atrium in like the loop circuit of the systemic circuit, the more valves are actually featured. In other words, the lower the pressure, the more the valves, that helps us to maintain and increase our venous return. Now, my favorite mechanism of venous return, I bet you guys don't even have a favorite mechanism of venous return, do you? But my favorite mechanism of venous return is what's called the skeletal muscle pump. And I've got it illustrated here. I'm very happy with my drawing here, actually. This is going to show us the skeletal muscle pump. Now, what you will notice is that I've got a vein in the middle of the shot, right? It's the same vein, right? Apart from we've got a couple of valves as opposed to one, right? We've got a couple of valves. So the blood is effectively moving up this way, pushing through these valves. But you'll also notice that around this uh, this vein, we have got two skeletal muscles. We have got, or probably more likely what we'd say is two motor, two separate motor units of a skeletal muscle. So what we've actually got here is the idea that veins run through muscles or skeletal muscles, let me write it in properly, skeletal muscles. They actually, or we are evolved, developed in a way that those veins will run through those skeletal muscles. So of course, if you're performing in your badminton match, in your dance routine, whatever it happens to be, and these muscles are actually contracting and relaxing, they're shortening and fattening, guess what is the impact on here? And I've actually drawn this in for us, that is the impact. As these muscles as these muscles shorten and contract, you can now see that effectively blood is squeezed. We get an increase of pressure and this allows better venous return. Now, can I just ask for you to start to consider why this might be relevant? Well, think about something like an active recovery. Can you see now why an active recovery is more effective than a non-active recovery? Could you see now where, let's say you're playing in a rugby match and the ball goes out of play for a set play, a line out, whatever, you might want to <laughs> jog rugby. I didn't mean to write, <laughs> didn't mean to write rugby there jog back into position. So rather than sort of ambling back into position, it's helpful to keep moving. So athletes will often do that, sort of like little side steps, jogging back into position, movement, because it maintains the pressure through these veins because the muscles, let's say of the gastrocnemius, let's say of the rectus femoris, are contracting and forcing blood back to the heart itself. So that's my favorite one. You can come up with your own favorite if you really want to, but I think that's a really interesting one. And then finally, very much on the same lines, we're gonna talk about our fifth mechanism here. Where are we? There we are. And we have got, obviously here, what is a very shaky drawing of the ribs and the thoracic cavity. Now I'm gonna tell you that this mechanism is what we refer to as the respiratory pump. And of course, as you are exercising or as a performer is exercising, we are getting greater depth and ultimately uh, frequency of breathing. So what then happens is, as blood, I'll, I'll sort of draw blood in a, in a colour that de blood definitely isn't, so let me choose white for example, as blood starts to kind of return into this hot, uh, into this area via let's say the vena cava, and of course it's going to come back into here, these are terrible drawings by the way, and here's our heart just here, awful drawing. What we're getting here is as the thoracic cavity, as it falls and moves in during expiration, as it rises and moves out during inspiration, of course we're getting a change in pressure in this respiratory environment. And this is effectively from respiratory muscles contracting. Think about the diaphragm, I've actually got that almost um, illustrated here. Respiratory muscles are contracting and they are better able now in this area to increase the pressure within the veins and therefore squeeze that blood back to the heart. So one last thing, you see that the more we exercise, or the more, let me change that, the more intensity that we exercise with, can you see actually how this would operate more? The ribs would be moving up and down with more force, but more rapidly, and this respiratory pump would therefore have more impact. This is how we ultimately maintain or increase venous return. That relationship with stroke volume means that we've always got blood to be ejected through systole from the heart. That is the big picture of venous return. Thank you.